Transportation Planning Board of Commissioners Stewart is here with us this evening, and this is Bill Morgan, the County Engineer. I'm going to drive the presentation from over here. If you guys can't hear me, let me know. <coughs> I'm having a little trouble with my voice. Um, so, we are here to talk about what we've been calling the um, Regional Road Fund Revenue Restoration. And um, tonight, what I'm planning on doing is we'll give you a little bit of background and talk about the Lane County Road Fund issues, the challenges that we've been facing, some of the corrective actions that the county has taken to date, but the current challenges that remain for us. Then we're going to talk about revenue options. There's been a lot of discussion at the county with our citizen advisory committees about different ways to generate revenue. And then we'll end with this idea of a regional solution, which is what we're here really to focus on this evening. So there's a lot of words up there, but the long story short is um, the Board of County Commissioners has known and has been hearing from us, from staff and public works, for a number of years that there has been a really sharp decrease in the amount of money that comes into our road fund. And I have a slide a little bit later to show you about that. And so the board said, we want you to go to the citizen body, the road advisory committee, and ask them to discuss a number of revenue options. And again, I'll get into some of the details about that later. After the Roads Advisory Committee did their analysis, they came back and made a recommendation to the Board of Commissioners unanimously that the Board of County Commissioners consider moving forward with the vehicle registration fee. So there have been a couple of meetings since then, essentially, where we were directed by the Board of County Commissioners to do some additional research, to do some polling that has been um, presented. And then the other thing that was very important to the board is that we do this in a regional manner and we come and we talk to the other cities because, of course, all the cities in Wayne County, of course, impacted by this and will benefit from this. And so we're on what we like to call the 12-city tour. Um, we are in, in city number five this evening with the city of Oak Ridge. <coughs> so as I mentioned, we had some pretty significant declines. Um, as many of you may know, Lane County used to have a fairly robust road fund because not only did we receive road fund dollars from gas tax, but we also received money from timber payments, which became the secure rural schools payment. We no longer receive any SRS dollars. Um, and our road fund dollars, as has been happening in cities, in the counties, in the states, and on a federal level, the gas tax dollars are declining significantly. And so with the reduction of the SRS and with the declining road funds, we're really reaching kind of a critical point in terms of being able to fund our, our road fund needs. Um, and again, this may be a reminder for some of you in terms of what makes up uh, our road funds, all of our road funds, the state highway fund. Of course, most of it, almost 50% is fuel tax that we all pay when we fill our vehicles. Registration fees are another large component. Now, those of us who have passenger vehicles pay registration fees, but heavy trucks also pay registration fees significantly higher than we do. And we can talk about that as well. But that's what that registration fee is for all of the passenger vehicles trucks. Trucks also, again, as you may well know, pay an additional weight mile tax. This is pretty unique to the state of Oregon. We actually have this system where we say we require uh, trucks to pay their fair share, and the legislature looks at this every two years, and the information that we've gotten back recently is, yes, not only are they paying their fair share, they're actually paying a little bit more than their fair share in terms of damage to the road. So this is what makes up all of the um, road funds that is distributed to counties and to cities as well. <clears throat> as I mentioned, we've seen these significant declines in Wayne County for a number of years as we're trying to take some corrective actions to address the fact that we're losing revenue. Um, so you can just see some of these things here. We've had a 35% staff reduction since 2000. We reduced our reserves by 50% since 2000. We've done a lot of department consolidation and reorganization to increase efficiencies. Uh, my department was one of those departments. Um, our county staff, our materials lab, our road maintenance folks use a lot of innovative technologies to save money, to use new kind of the most innovative technologies in terms of doing road preservation in the most efficient, cost-effective manner. And then another thing that we've really moved forward on that we didn't used to do quite so aggressively is we really now need to seek federal grants and partner with our um, regional partners to pool our resources together to try and leverage our resources to make our dollars go further. 
But even with all of these corrective actions, again, what we've reached is this critical level that our county administrator refers to as a tipping point. And we've really gotten to the point where there's no more reductions that we can make. We're at the point, and we've already had to do this in some ways, that we have to cut, cut services. So we used to have, for instance, a dust abatement program that we haven't been able to do for the past few years. Um, our mowing, which we used to do three times a year, has been reduced to two times a year. Of course, we try not to do service cuts, but at some point, you really have to be able to make the books balance. And just again, a little bit more on the, on the current challenge. So you can see from this graph, the top line is the annual expenses in black, and our um, operating expenses are $38 million, and then our revenues are at $29 million. So we have this $9 million gap, and that's what we've been having to take from the reserves that's been depleting the reserves. Um, one of the things we remind ourselves all the time and we like to remind folks is it's not just a matter of being able to preserve the roads and save the roads, but it's being able to respond to you know, disasters, landslides, we see these types of things, I'm making sure our roads are clear of snow and ice, and again, I think you understand that, but that's another big component of why we need um, a, a healthy road front. <clears throat> Lane County has been fortunate. We've had, like I said, we, we have a very robust road front. We've been able to do this thing where we've invested in our roads. We have, and people tell us this, why do you need money? You guys have great roads, and we're very proud of that. One of the reasons for that is that we've been able to maintain our roads by doing simple things like overlays and chip seals. While they're in good condition, we can invest a dollar a year, and on the left side, that's the quality of the road. So at the top is like a brand new road, and then as you go down, it's the road deteriorating until you eventually get to, um, you're back down to bare dirt, essentially. By being able to continue to maintain the roads, you know, it's like painting your house or repairing your roof, you know, it's deferring your maintenance, of course. If you can do the maintenance at the top side, it costs much less to do. If we let our roads deteriorate the way that we have seen in some of the cities in the metro area, they can't spend a dollar a square foot. They start, start spending 12 or $15 a square foot because you're actually doing full road reconstruction. By the time a road starts to show wear and tear that I might feel when I'm driving my car down the road or that you could see in terms of cracks or potholes, the road is in really bad shape at that point and you can't keep it maintained with this overlay. And so then you get to the point where you do have to do much more costly repairs. And, and again, we want to be able to continue doing that smart, sound investment of our dollars and our roads. We have this um, uh, pavement condition index that evaluates the condition of our roads. And again, that was what on the previous chart the quality was. And if you just look at the line on the bottom there, so again, our roads are in pretty decent shape right now. But on the current trend with our current funding projections, it's the yellow line on the bottom. You can see just over a few years, the roads will start to deteriorate very quickly. And then on the right side, that chart just shows the backlog of maintenance needs, which of course is going to increase proportionally um, as our roads fall into greater and greater disrepair. I mentioned at the beginning, and I'm going to keep stressing this, that um, what the Board of County Commissioners was discussing when we were talking about revenue options is this idea that the road issue, the road fund issue, is not a county issue, it's a regional issue. It's an issue that affects our cities as well. The cities, as I said, like the county, we receive our road fund dollars in the same place, so all of our road fund dollars are shrinking. Um, and, and in terms of the public, when people are traveling on the roads, not necessarily concerned about is it an ODOT facility, a Eugene facility, a county facility. People want to be able to get from where they live to where they work, shop, play um, on a safe, efficient transportation system. So we had this idea that we really wanted to look for a solution that would address a regional need. So again, as I mentioned, and I know I'm going through this quickly, we'll have lots of time for questions if you want, but we brought this uh, question of revenue options um, to our Roads Advisory Committee, a citizen committee, and staff and consultants had worked over a couple of years on starting with 28 revenue options and looking at different types of things for generating road fund money, capital improvement money, and even general fund money. As we started to hone in on what the need was, we narrowed down the revenue options to the ones that made the most sense 
and these are the ones that rose to the top that the Road Advisory Committee did a significant analysis of. The one on the top, the grant writer, this is what we call low-hanging fruit. We were actually able to implement that in 2012. That person has been very successful, again, writing those grants and helping bring dollars into the county that we would not otherwise have been able to get. And again, I'll go through these kind of quickly, but I'm happy to answer any questions and to address questions for Bill and Kay as well. Um, so the next <coughs> thing we talked about was county road bonds. And again, I've been talking about the need for maintenance and preservation. We're not looking for capital dollars, and that's what county road bonds are really good for. So we started looking into some other things. There are things like the transportation utility fees, transportation service district. These are different types of mechanisms. The utility fee um, essentially is a, um, a way that you can charge based on um, land use. So those of us who would have a residential land use would be associated with a certain number of trips traveling back and forth. Commercial would be assessed based on the projected number of trips. Um, transportation service district is a little bit similar idea. Again, you can create an area and, and specifically create a fee for transportation services. With a, with a lot of the other options and these two particular options we looked at, one of the big challenges for them, in addition to having some political challenges in terms of being able to get support, is there isn't a mechanism to collect the dollars. And so with the transportation utility fee, um, we would have to look at an agreement with one of the utility providers or spend some money internally at the county or somewhere to be able to have a mechanism to collect the dollars and redistribute the dollars. And that takes a lot of time and money to actually be able to do. Uh, the same is true with the service districts. Um, so again, for a number of reasons, the Roads Advisory Committee thought those were not a viable option. A property tax local option levy, of course, is another thing that was discussed. That is a possibility. Um, Property taxes have been notoriously challenging to pass um, in this area and this state. And so that was a really big concern for the um, traditional committee. We also talked a great deal and we've had a lot of questions about using the local gas tax. That is something that we can do. The Board of Commissioners could put that out for a public vote. Um, there's, a, there's some challenges with that. One of them is, as I mentioned at the beginning, gas taxes are declining. We're all driving less, or the nation and the state are driving less. Um, our vehicles are becoming more and more efficient, and some people are starting to use alternatively fueled vehicles, and they're not paying any taxes for their fuel. Um, so in addition to that, a local gas tax, some of the cities have gas taxes now, um, and so there's, there's a challenge about how would we apply a gas tax. If we apply the gas tax only in the county, in the unincorporated areas, it does not generate very much money. The other challenge with the gas tax is we have been made, it's been made very clear to us that there will be strong statewide opposition from a number of lobbying groups opposed to a gas tax. So again, that was seen as something that was very challenging. Do you have a question? Has anybody brought the, the idea of toll? 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 You know, I love that idea, but that has not been something that's being discussed in great detail because, again, there's some real challenges with um, creating that. I mean, again, we have to create a system, you know, building the building, you know, building the tolls and the toll booths and having the collection and have who collects it, where does that go to? Um, in the East Coast, as you may know, there's. I'm in the West. When it comes to user fees, that's probably the most correct. <coughs> I mean, like. He has six cars, he doesn't want to pay $39 a car, but he pays $2 and down the road. He'll give you $35. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
there's other user fees that have been evaluated as well, and there are, again, political taxes. Sure, I see none of those up there. Either. I mean, local gas tax, but local gas tax, to be honest with you, is, is not going to be a user fee anymore because, by, as you said, the cars get too good of gas mileage, people drive electric cars. Um, and even on top of that, a gas tax that somebody pays for in, in Oak Ridge, you know, maybe going the other way, or somebody comes from, from Idaho and, and buys gas once here, you know, it doesn't really affect our road, but they're, sure. they're paying a the user fee for using our road. A lot of people. A toll, a toll benefit is <laughs> if we don't have a sales tax, that's one way of. And you only need four. Or you I-5 up north oh. and south, 205 and 84. And, 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 and those are state facilities. So again, so the county and the state is generous with us when they can be. But they're, if they're collecting tolls on their facilities, that's not going to come back to the county and it's not going to come back to the cities. So <laughs> be a way to <laughs> but, but, uh, I was I mean, how long is the world use road? Why don't we uh, Why don't we go ahead and let her let her finish the presentation, and then we can get into the dialogue more quickly. Otherwise, we'll be bogged down there and down that road. So. Okay, I will continue on. Um, so the so the final discussion um, was a local vehicle registration fee, and and again, there's a number of reasons that the um, Road Advisory Committee landed on that solution. Um, the registration fee um, is a regional solution because by the state uh, revised statutes, we are required to distribute 40% of the dollars that are collected back to the city. So the county could keep 60% of the funds, but the 40% the is distributed back to the city to your road <coughs> funds for your roads to use as you see fit consistent with the Constitution that says you must use it for road purposes only. Um, it's the certainty of funding, again, it's more stable compared to the gas tax, which is defining and, and does have some fluctuations. Um, you know, this idea of a user fee, we actually see this as a, as a system fee, paying for the vehicle registration as a way for people to buy into using that system. One of the other questions that we've gotten commonly is, well, what about those bicyclists who aren't paying? We can't charge bicyclists for the state law, and even if we had a mechanism that we could, we wouldn't actually be able to generate enough money to cover the cost. But this idea of most bicyclists, in fact, 95% of bicyclists, I understand, also have a registered vehicle. So if you decide to use your bike, you're not paying the gas tax that you already bought into being able to use the system. Again, it's directed to road use only. And it's very efficient to administer because, like the state highway fund, the state collects the money for us. Um, the, both the vehicles are registered by the state. They allocate the amount of money that, towards the county. They send us a check. And then we, at no cost to the city, distribute that based on um, the population. So again, this idea of it being a regional solution, 40% um, of the dollars are distributed to the cities based on the population of the cities. So the vehicle registration fee is collected by the state based on the number of registered vehicles and then distributed by population. So for Oak Ridge, based on your population, numbers, um, you'd receive about $54,200 every year. Um, some other things that, that are very clear, and we have also gotten some questions about how can the vehicle registration be applied. It's very specific. Basically, you, are, you have to pay the vehicle registration fee on passenger vehicles and trailers the way we currently are required to pay when you register with the state. We can't, and I know that this is frustrating to folks here, and I know it's been frustrating to the Board of County Commissioners. We, we would like to have some flexibility and being able to perhaps offer people who have a number of vehicles an exemption or a lot of income folks or seniors on fixed income um, exemptions. Unfortunately, the law just does not allow that. It's a flat fee, and that's just the way the ORS is. Um, another question we got a lot, and I talked about at the beginning, is trucks. You know, why aren't we charging this to trucks? Well, ORS precludes us from doing that by law. And again, the reason for that is because the trucks are paying weight mile taxes and this sliding registration fees. So they pay anywhere from 35 times to um, 11 times to 35 times as much as the passion of the vehicle. Um, the provision of a vehicle 
vehicle registration fee was agreed to by diverse uh, stakeholders at a state level. This is why the provision was put in ORS. The counties will be able to apply this. Counties uh, the size of Lane County do have the option to impose a fee. But again, the Board of County Commissioners is being very clear they are not interested in imposing the fee. What they are considering now, and what we're here to ask for the Mayor and Council support for, is can we have your support for the Board of County Commissioners to place this fee on the May ballot? The Commission again made it very clear that if we're moving forward with this, it is going to be by a public vote. Um, and again, this uh, idea again is very important to people, especially in the communities um, down in the metro area, that those funds that are collected are used for more purposes than we can't otherwise be distributed. So some of the, um, again, one of the questions we've gotten are, well, what vehicles are exempt? So just very quickly here, you know, and again, this is consistent with the current vehicle registration, so disabled victim vehicles, antique vehicles, government vehicles, school vehicles, farm vehicles, snowmobiles, um, and then the heavy vehicles are um, exempted again by law. We don't have flexibility with that. Um, RVs, travel trailers are exempted. We want to be clear that trailers are not. Again, per the current state law, trailers are treated as vehicles and we pay that kind of fee. So, and I know these are hard to read, but um, these are a couple of slides from the polling work that was done by Gary Manros. Um, and again, the board directed us after they wanted to uh, <coughs> look into this idea further to work with this consulting firm. They actually had done work for us before when we uh, worked on the sheriff's level a few years ago. And one of the things that he found first off was 62% of the people polled, we polled 504 people on telephone, said they would rather pay a modest increase in fees rather than see additional service costs. So that actually was um, a, a pretty positive um, number in terms of the amount of people who were willing to consider that. The amount that we can charge by law is $43 a year. That's what the current state vehicle registration we polled that question, $43 a year is not something that people here will support. That was very clear. And so they started playing around with the numbers again. What uh, he landed on was this $35 a year fee. That price point seemed to be one that would garner a significantly more amount of support. Now, this firm uses this model called the go-no-go. And you'll see you have this 53% likely support. And that, by taking 45, that 45%, which definitely said yes when they were polled, and then half of the problem. And, and he has found, and he's done a lot of this work, um, that, that that is a very good indicator. Now, 53% doesn't sound that great. Very low, 50%. But then what we find is that when you start giving people information about the details of answering some of the questions, that support goes up to over 57%. And so that is what um, our consultant said is a go. That there are, there is a chance that this would be something that could be supported by the voters in the county. Um, but we had to have some key points that we keep in mind. Again, the price point was really important. If we do this, we can only do it for $35 for passenger vehicles, light trucks, and trailers. We do have the ability to reduce it for motorcycles. Um, other other uh, regions have been able to get ODOT to agree to that. We would have $20 for motorcycles and mopeds. And then there's this funny thing that heavy trailers pay a one-time $10 fee. That's what their current fee is, so that's what we could, uh, or the amount, maximum amount we could uh, charge. The reason for that is, in case you're curious, is those heavy trailers, they're over 8,000 pounds. They also pay weight mile tax. Um, the fact that this is constitutional to road purposes, that people really understand that we will only use it for road purposes, and the county is going a step further. Again, we are only interested in this money for maintenance and preservation. We have a $6 billion asset in our county road system. We have over 1,400 miles. That's not lane miles, that's miles of road. And we have over 400 bridges. It is incumbent upon us to be able to maintain that system and the public that really resonates with this. We need to be able to maintain and preserve that asset and keep our roads safe for the traveling public. Um, public trust is vital to this. 
And so one of the things that the county has committed to is if we do choose to move forward with this and we are successful, then we will do an annual audit by an outside audit, and we will also have a citizen committee that will review the distribution of the funds so that we can demonstrate to the public that the promises that we're making today will be kept in the future. So those are really important points for us to start. Um, and I'm sorry this is difficult to read. Um, this is a timeline. So the circle on the bottom says regional partner coordination, and so that's where we are now. Again, as I mentioned, we're going out to the 12 different cities to gather their input, hear from the public, and also request that the council support the board of county commissioners to bring the seat on the ballot. Um, if we do this, um, the board is actually meeting on December 16th. We'll have heard from 10 of the 12 cities by then, and we'll ask the board whether or not they want us to move forward with an ordinance. If we do that, we'll have that first meeting, we call it, on the beginning of January, and then we'll have a public hearing and some additional public outreach. So again, just to be clear, the county is seeking support from the regional partners. Not, we're not asking if you support the fee, but do you support the Board of Commissioners placing the fee on the May 2015 ballot for the public? That concludes my whirlwind presentation. If you're available for questions. Well, 